Oh man, this is exciting. Search GPT is finally out for those who initially were on the wait list. So I'm trying it out, testing it out. And there was one thing that really kind of surprised me. So let's dive in and I'll show you. All right, so let's just dive right in and start playing with this bad boy. And as you can see, uh, the platform looks the same, but there is a button down here that says search. That is how you turn on search GPT. And if you don't already know, OpenAI is behind search GPT, who is the maker and founder of chat GPT. Uh, and then this is just an extension already built into chat GPT to turn on search GPT, which will then search the web and use it as a search engine. So let's just try this out and see how it works and see how it definitely there are some noticeable differences. So let's just do uh, show me the top news today. And you'll see how this looks comparatively speaking to if you search uh, for this inside of Google. It looks similar to if you do a chat GPT search, but the difference is it will include the actual sources here. So it has the sources of you know AP News, CBS, CBS News, um, but it breaks it down by politics, international affairs, health, business, entertainment, uh, and then it ha has all of the sources here. So it's sourcing its information, I think, which is really important. So, you know, it's not just pulling stuff uh, out of thin air. Now, you can continually use this like ChatGPT and make it in a conversational manner. So if you want um, you know, more of a specific news, you can ask it for additional information. So show me all business news. And once you enter that in, it's going to basically give you only business news and basically change the content that you are uh, that you are reading. Again, all the sources are in here. This is a lot cleaner. You know, the biggest noticeable change is a lot cleaner than if you do a Google search, you're coming up with a mishmash of information uh, and it's, it's a little bit harder to look at. Uh, there's ads and, and different things. Here it is a lot cleaner. Uh, again, more conversational. But what is really interesting about this, let's just do another search here for uh, show me the top deck stains. You can use it for basically anything you would normally search for on uh, on Google or uh, any other search engine. So it's showing you the top uh, deck stains with the sources, uh, showing you pictures here. Again, this information, easy to read, easy to uh, come across. So the other really, what I thought was really kind of interesting and a little shocking, and this is something that's gonna, I think, hurt Google a little bit is, uh, so if I'm gonna ask this, where did you, um, let's just ask it, what search engine did you use to get this information? And this is what I'm talking about here. So it is basically saying that it uses, I utilize Bing to gather the information provided, which is really, really interesting. So especially if I think you're a business or, I mean, especially for businesses, but you, so for Bing, they have something similar to search, uh, you know, Google search console console uh, for Bing. So I think if you're a business or a website, it's important to make sure that you're optimized on Bing as well as Google, uh, because if these platforms are basically choosing one search engine over another to provide the information, then they're going to favor that search engine more so than the other search engine. So in this case, they're going to favor Bing search results over Google search results, uh, and they're not utilizing Google to pull this information. So I think this is very, very interesting and a little bit changed to the, dy to the dynamic and how we have to position things. So I think it is important to make sure to go over to Bing uh, and make sure that you are optimized on there as well. And doing the same SEO strategies that work, you know, with your website, all the same SEO strategies are gonna be the same, you know, as far as optimizing your website, uh, making sure that you have high quality content, high ranking keywords on your website, uh, making sure you're releasing content regularly. So if you do, uh, I always recommend doing blogging regularly and you can use a tool like Journalist AI to release AI blogs a couple of day, a couple of week. Uh, and they are SEO optimized and they'll be optimized for Google or Bing. 
which is kind of nice and it really takes uh, a lot of the worry out of there. So there's a link below uh, to try Journalist AI for free if you want to release AI blogs with a couple of clicks. But yeah, I would go to Bing, uh, go over to their search console, make sure that you're optimized on there as well because it's gonna be important to ensure that you're showing up in search results on search GPT if people are searching for you. But those that's the biggest change, that's a sneak peek as far as how this looks and how to use it and what sources are uh, what sources it's pulling from. Uh, so we'll see how they how this continues to evolve over time, how it competes with other uh, search engines out there, AI search engines out there, you know, like Gemini, Gemini and other one, Perplexity. Um, so th it is similar in those ways as well. So that is it for this episode. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Definitely try this bad boy out.